Well, the new iPhones were announced, and once again, the world is extremely stupid, because apparently now there are feminists complaining that the phones are just too big, and that it's sexist. I'm not exaggerating, it's a story. Apple criticized for making phones too big for the average female hand as it announces new iPhone. You know, there are two parent, there, there are two extremes on a spectrum of, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but basically, You've got on one side the extremists who believe the world should fit them. That they are a certain way and why doesn't the world do what they want? On the other, other side, you have people who think, this is the way the world is, how do I fit into it? And then you have people, you know, in between to various degrees, because there's a little bit of nuance. I tend to fall way more on the side of the world is the way it is, how do I fit into it? Though I do think it's important that individuals try to make changes to make things better. You don't just want to accept that the world is a terrible place and then try to exploit it. But there are a lot of people who do. There are people who are extremely wealthy who think, you know what, the world sucks. Why don't I just do whatever it takes to get what I want and fit into it? But then you have, you know, it's like there are two extremists. The ex Within any political extreme faction, I feel like you have both of these people. You've got extremists who will say whatever it takes to make money. But then you've got people who think the world needs to fit the way they want the world to be. I'm closer to the middle, but I lean more towards, look, there are certain, certain things about the world that we just have to accept, all right? If Apple is going to make a phone, and that phone is big, I'll tell you what. Don't buy it. Is that so difficult? Seriously. And let's, let's, let's take a look at this, uh, this logical error by some of these people. Apple has been criticized by feminists for designing iPhones which are too big for the average female hand. I can't believe this is an actual story. Campaigners have responded angrily to the news that the technology company will be discontinuing the iPhone SE, which has a smaller screen. They argue that as the average female hand is an inch shorter in width compared to the average males, women need the option to buy smaller devices. Well, right away I can tell you this Telegraph article is not politically correct because a woman could be male, all right? It's an important thing to point out. So it's not that they're, they're mischaracterizing it, I guess, I, th I think. I, it's hard for me to keep track of what is or isn't at this point. The screen width of the new iPhone X models range from 5.8 to 6.5 inches compared to the smaller iPhone SE, which is a smaller screen at four inches. But I've also, I, I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the iPhone SE is basically the iPhone 5 with like updated technology, which, that, you know, that size didn't exist for a couple of years. You know, they brought it back because people like small phones. But apparently now they're getting rid of it again, probably because people don't buy it. Look, if people bought the iPhone SE in quantities that it made sense, that, made, that, were, that were good for Apple, they wouldn't discontinue it. But I'm willing to bet most people don't want it. So now you have a weird minority of people claiming it's a feminist issue. Caroline Criado Perez. The feminist campaigner behind the Millicent Fawcett statue in Parliament Square and the Jane Austen 10-pound note said she developed repetitive strain injury from using a phone which is too big for her hand. She told the Telegraph, I genuinely have RSI from having an iPhone 6 and it went as soon as I switched to an iPhone SE. Okay, so look, companies are going to make a product. If that product doesn't work for you, don't complain the company should make a product for you. Find a different product, because you know what's really funny? There are, a, there are hundreds of different kinds of Android phones that work just as well. Oh, but you want your iPhone. You want your specific phone. Sorry, you can't have it. Look, if this campaign works and Apple wants to make small phones because people are complaining about the size of their phones, that's just showing the market worked. And if Apple thinks they're going to profit or, in, like, okay, Apple might not profit in terms of cash revenue. But if they can generate good press from something like this, there's still a net gain for the company. If Apple thinks they will gain, they will do it. If Apple thinks they will lose, they will not. That's why I think campaigns like this are absolutely absurd, okay? You know, you can, you can contact Apple, but I guess, look, you wanna pressure the company to do it, I guess. Zainab Tufekci, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. We, went, we want to reach as many customers as we can with this incredible technology, Apple marketing chief Phil Schiller said. Without irony, while Apple phased out the only phone I can hold without risking dropping, stuck with Apple for security reasons. I'm going to point out that while, okay, I'm gonna read this next tweet because I, I well, well, let's talk some, some science, some, some journalism. Welcome to the big screen, says Apple, and women like me with small hands who need the most secure phone. 
Oh, the most secure phone, you say? Oh, carry on. For safety reasons, are stuck with something they can't hold and constantly risk dropping. Company that designs $5 billion headquarters without a child care center for the win. Oh, my stars and garters. Look, Apple is a terrible company, in my opinion. I do have an iPhone. I barely use it. I switched to Android a while ago. I use iPhone for, for one reason, okay? And I, I don't know anymore, but I did. And it's because the tech industry in California prefers it simply because upper class white people prefer it. That's really it. You can, there was, a, there was a map that tracks iPhone location versus Android location, and the affluent areas have iPhones and the poor areas have Androids. Why? Because Androids are fine, but they're inexpensive. And, and now I would actually argue Androids are better, okay? More customizable, you can do a lot of hacking and stuff. But what, what, I, what I love here is that Zainab says, the most secure phone, and this has to be one of the, oh God. Look, technically that's not untrue. Listen. For a long time, people said that Mac computers couldn't get viruses. That's a lie. And Apple marketed that lie. The reality was the market share for Apple is so small relative to PC, or it was, that people weren't making viruses for Apple computers because there wasn't a net gain. If you write a virus for a PC, you can infect millions of computers, whereas you might get dozens to hundreds on Apple. Now that Apple has a larger market share, yes, there are tons of viruses for, for Macintosh, for, for Apple computers. Now, is the iPhone more secure than an Android? Yes, out of the box, yes. But I'm pretty sure Zainab is a, a journalist in Turkey. I could be wrong, but let's, let's double check. Zainab, thinking about tools ourselves, New York Times writer. So I don't exactly know uh, where Zainab's beat is, but I know that she has tweeted about uh, Turkey or something in the past. But let me, let me just say this. It is, okay, look, if you're a journalist who has no idea what you're doing, okay, fine, buy an iPhone. But if you think the iPhone is the most secure phone, I've got a bridge to sell you because it is absolutely not. There are specific phones designed for security. There are apps designed for security that work on, on, on the Android. And more importantly, if you are working in journalism, you should never bring your core device with you in the field, period. Look. I've, I've done commercials on my main channel for Virtual Shield, and one thing I always tell people, there is no such thing as perfect security, okay? There's only layers of security. And the more layers you have, the harder it is to move. I tell people, security on your mobile device or computer should be thought of no different as like a bulletproof vest. You can get a really light vest, might stop a bullet or two, not gonna save your, might save your life, but it's gonna hurt. You can upgrade your armor, you can wear ceramic plates, that'll stop a rifle round, but at some point, you're gonna be, you're, you need to drive in a tank. And the more you wear, the harder it is to move and maneuver. And the same thing is true for security on your devices. To me, saying it's the most secure phone and then demanding Apple, you know, make a smaller device for you is just like a combination of ignorance and entitlement. And those are such a, dang, it's such, it's such a dangerous combination. It genuinely does affect women's hand health. Women do buy more iPhones than men. It just baffles me that Apple doesn't design with our bodies in mind. What I find fascinating is this idea that women buy more iPhones than men. Why is that? Is it because Apple is all about sleek marketing and ineffective products? Look, I've always been a much bigger fan of Linux than I have of, uh, of Apple, uh, of even Windows. But if <sighs> Apple sucks, it does. You know, I, I've got friends this was a couple of years ago, but I had a friend who was showing me a, a zero-day exploit on, on an iPhone that wasn't patched. He was like, oh yeah, I've had this ex exploit for years. Apple doesn't care about it, I guess. And I'm like, or they don't know about it? And he's like, no, they probably know about it because it was simple. And it he, he said, the only reason he thinks it's not a, an O-day is because if it, uh, zero-day means the public doesn't know about it, basically. He said the reason he thought it was, uh, was because if it was public, you'd see press writing about this exploit because it was really dangerous and no one did anything, but he thought Apple knew about it. And so the point is, Apple products are really popular, especially among journalists who work at the New York Times. I assure you, I assure you, there is an exploit available for the hackers who want to break into your device, and it just sounds like an excuse to me. We should be furious about this. We are paying just as much money for it as men. Oh, it's... <laughs> it really is about uh, everything. Serena Williams throws a temper tantrum, and it's sexism. I, Apple decides to make a bigger phone because that's what's selling and it's a temper tantrum. And everyone's always gonna point the finger and just say, you know what, it's sexism. But, but men get a big phone. Look, I don't like big phones either, okay? 
I, you know, I, I got, I use the, the Galaxy S9. It's, it's relatively thin. Uh, uh, it's not very wide. I prefer it. Use it one hand. All right. Put your fingerprint thing on the back. I'm not going to buy the iPhone. All right. It's, it's, uh, people are just, I have to make a choice between making an upgrade to the only phone that fits my hand before they discontinue it or buying an Android. Soon there will be no iPhone that fits the average woman's hand size. An Android, even though we, even though the technology is two years out of date, or get a new one and deal with the fact that I'll just that it'll just give me RSI. That's not an acceptable choice in the 21st century. You need to have a smartphone. Yes, an Android. An Android. Seriously, the entitlement of telling a company to make a phone for you because these phones are too big, and the entitlement of being like, oh well, I refuse to use Android. It's like, come on, man. Jess Phillips, the Labor MP for Birmingham Yardley, agreed that companies often do not design their products with women in mind. She said, In so much design and technology development, the default standard is always that which suits a man. Companies have to get better at recognizing that their idea of normal should account for all their customers. Others suggested the problem stems from the fact Apple does not hire as many women at the top of the company as it does men. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Apple's sales department looked over their data and said, hey guys, bigger phones sell better. They looked at the Galaxy Note and said, wow, bigger phones really do sell better. How many phones do we sell in terms of small phones? Not that many. Okay, let's shift production to bigger phones. And then it was done. I assure you there was, like, there, there's no group of men sitting around going like, this phone fits perfectly in my hand. Let's make them this big. Anyway, everyone's crazy. Stick around. I've got another video coming up in just a few minutes.